Buenos dias. Safe practices are in order. Don't forget to wear your face mask, covering your nose and your mouth when you're taking it out, especially those that you can wash, right? Take it off on many handles, put it in soapy water. Do not touch that outer surface. All right, girls. So let's see what we have for art today. Now, art up today, I want you, you are going to be doing the designing, all right? But I want you to use all the elements of what you have learned from before. So let's see what it is I'm talking about. So slideshow from the beginning. It's taken a little while. Okay. So we are looking at abstract picture making, the coral reef and the parrot fish. Now we all know about the coral reef, right? Right. So here we have a picture of what the coral reef, a healthy reef looks like this. I can remember many years ago, almost 26 years ago, visiting the reef, when you could have scuba dive, this is the colors that you would see. And the beautiful parrot fish, you can see it almost everywhere in the reef. Now that is not so. And if you visit, if you ever had the opportunity to visit the reef, I'm sure you did not see all these beautiful colors, reds and greens and yellows. You would have mostly seen this sort of color. All right. And also this fish. So today we're going to look at that. So Boko Reef, in essence, is a reef with many different types of corals, right? And so this one and, and the species that grow there, that live in the reef. So we have turtles and different types of fish, and we have different types of corals growing in the reef. Right? So Boko Reef is the largest coral reef in Tobago and was designated at a, as a marine park in 1973. Its massive proportions contain a reef system of five reef flats that are separated by deep channels. So when you go visiting the Boko Reef, you are really seeing one of many channels, right? The island of Tobago has multiple coral reef ecosystems. The Boko Reef, the Caldon Reef, the Speyside Reef are the three largest coral reef marine ecosystem in Tobago. The Boko Reef is a coralline reef ecosystem and is located on the Southwest region of Tobago. So here we have a beautiful display of the reef. And when we get there, we go there by boat. But right now I think they have stopped this. You can see the, the, the tourists, they are there and they're actually standing on the coral. And this is a no-no because it destroys and breaks the coral. And a coral takes many years before it grows, right? So this practice that you see in here where they are actually standing, it has stopped. The more advice that you float, right? Or swim across or sometimes they would not even stop for you to go and swim. So let's see what is a coral reef. So a coral reef is made up of tiny, thousands of tiny animals called coral polyps. Each small circle is a coral polyp. So it's an animal really, right? Living alongside the coral polyps are tiny plant-like things called algae. These tiny animal polyps and algae have grown together to create a large structure called a coral reef. Coral reefs begin to form when free swimming coral larvae attach to submerged rocks or other hard surfaces along the edges of the islands or continent. In a fringing reef, if a fringing reef forms around a volcanic island that sinks completely below sea level, while the corals continues to grow upwards and atoll is formed, right? So here we have over here, many different types of coral formations, right? 
I just showed you it so that you can see what it looked like. Maybe one day when you visit Boko and you hear the tour guides talking, something here from here will pop or you would see something very familiar. Okay, so here we have some images of what the coral reef look like, right? And Bills, I'm telling you, this is what it looks like in the past. I, some of the tours to some of the reefs, they have stopped to allow it to grow so that you can get this brilliant color once more. Because what has been happening, because of the amount of tourists and human activity, the reef have started to deplete. So what we, they had to do was cease activity to allow it to grow back, right? Now, one of the activities which is not encouraging the reef is the parrotfish, right? So let's learn about the parrotfish. So the parrotfish, it's a very colorful tropical feature that's feature that spends 90% of its day eating algae off the corals. So you might say, oh my gosh, it's killing the reef. No, it's not. It is, it helps control algae populations and can create new surfaces for baby corals to attach and grow. All right, so the parrotfish, it plays a very important role in maintaining that coral reef. Because what happens is if you have too much algae in the water, right? Mm -hmm. And algae because of lack of sunlight due to probably oil spills for activity of men, man, or sometimes baby for corals in their formation, they get detached again because of too much activity in the water these parrotfish they are the ones that will come and create an environment for them to come back one of the other things that the parrotfish does is poop it's poop when it scrapes off the coral it poops white sand so when you go to the beach and nylon pool and you see this white sand one of the contributors contributors to this is the parrotfish now, if you look at the parrotfish, unlike any other fish, it appears to have a beak, right? That's why they call it a parrotfish. So that, its teeth, its, its mouth, it actually has teeth. It appears to be teeth that nibble on the coral. So here it is, we've seen it here, and they spend them times feeding it. Now, this is what our reef looks like, right? And that's, this is not a healthy one because there's, it's overflown, it's overgrown with algae. And what the parrotfish will do, it will come and eat all this green, allowing the polyps to grow, creating more coral, right? Now the coral fish, uh, the um, parrot fish has many different colors, many different varieties, but the distinguishing feature is that bump over its mouth right? And it appears to have something like a beak, but that part is the sharp part that allows it to eat away at the coral, eat away at the algae, right? So these are some illustrations of the parrotfish, right? Which um, you can actually go also on Google Drive and you could go into Google and Google drawing of a parrotfish, you will see many other images of the parrotfish that will help you draw it, all right? And what's, what, is sick, what is also noticeable about the parrotfish, it doesn't have one set pattern. It has many different colors. Right, so this is how you can color the parrotfish. These are some examples. So there are about 80 species of parrotfish, right? Parrotfish are elongated, but rather blunt head and deep body. So when they say blunt head, it's a kind of heavy head and the body is wide. It's not a narrow fish, it's a wide fish. So you're seeing that kind of bump here. It's kind of bump, but you, and you're seeing the beak and it's very wide, okay? And they are very brightly colored. This one isn't too much like it. Eh? It's a simplistic image of it but it's mostly looking like this, right? 
they have large scales and characteristic beak-like formed by the fused teeth of the jaw. The beak is used to scrape algae and the soft part of the coral from coral reefs, and it is strong enough to leave noticeable scars on the coral. The fish grind their food and bits of coral, like plate-like teeth in their throat, and then they pass it out in the sand, the white sand that you see, right? Now, this is the, this is the problem. Now, because of fisherman, and again, his demand for food, one of the fishes that he is hunting and fishing for is the parrot fish. So here we see it here. You see it in many different colors. Look at the size of these fishes, right? It's almost as big as an arm, right? This is one of the problems so far. And they are saying, no, there has not been a direct um, law saying to stop it, but there is growing concern that the fishing of this, it, it, it needs to be addressed, otherwise we will near extinction, and it has somewhat affected our coral reef. Okay? So let me see if I can play this video for you on why the parrot fish is important. Environmental Educator at Fort Park Field Station. In today's episode, I will be talking all about parrot fish. This incredibly diverse and often colorful fish plays a very important role in maintaining the world's coral reefs. So today, we'll take a look at how they do this, why parrot fish matter, and why it's important for us to affect them. The parrot fishes are a group of mainly herbivorous fish found in the coral reef environments around the tropics and subtropics. There are about 95 different species of parrotfish worldwide, and there is a lot of variety between these different species, but all play significant roles in maintaining coral reefs and bioerosion. Parrotfish feed mostly on plant matter, and some species are famous for secreting excess mucus from their mouths to form a cocoon to sleep in. This helps protect the sleeping parrotfish by hiding its scent from nocturnal reef predators like sharks and eels. It can also alert the parrotfish that danger is nearby. If a predator penetrates the cocoon, this wakes the sleeping parrotfish up and gives it a slight head start in escaping. This interesting group of fish also has a very specialized life cycle. Most species of parrotfish are sequential hermaphrodites. This means that they start life out as females in their initial phase and eventually switch sexes to become males later in life during their terminal phase. Parrotfish will often live and feed in schools that are made with a similarly sized fish, and males will often school with multiple females at once. When parrotfish spawn, they do so via broadcast spawning and do not care for the young, like many other reef fish. To understand why parrotfish are such an important part of the coral reef ecosystem, we first have to look at threats to coral reefs. Managing and protecting coral reefs may be simple on paper, but in practice, it can actually be pretty tough. Doing things like practicing sustainable fishing, reducing pollutants, and avoiding damaging corals seems pretty simple. But sadly, not enough is being done to save these beautiful and complex ecosystems. When coral reefs begin to suffer and die off, algae begins to grow on the dead coral and the rock that the coral grows on and can choke out surviving corals and other organisms. However, there is hope. Parrotfish get their name from their unique beak-like teeth, often compared to the beak of the parrot. They are mainly herbivores and use this distinct beak to feed on algae by scraping it off of corals and other hard substrates that the algae likes to grow on. In some cases in the Caribbean, up to 90% of a pair of fish's diet consists of algae. In addition to controlling algae populations in and around coral reefs, pair of fish also produce sand. As they scrape algae off of rocks and dead corals, some of the indigestible calcium carbonate is ground up and eaten along with the algae. After passing through the parrot fish's digestive system and being ground up even more, the fish excrete this calcium carbonate as sand. This helps keep beaches healthy worldwide. A single parrot fish can produce up to 200 pounds of sand in just a single year. As human populations grow and more and more people are catching fish to eat, the larger predatory reef fish species like groupers and snappers are seeing a decrease in numbers, especially in older and larger individuals. Because of this, fishermen in areas like the Caribbean are instead turning their focus to a previously less popular eating fish, the parrotfish. 
In one study conducted in 2019 and published by the Ecological Society of America, scientists found that in areas with heavy fishing pressure, paired fish populations are made up of mostly smaller, younger fish. In some cases, up to 70% of paired fish on reefs were less than 11 centimeters long. This has two major negative impacts. First, as mentioned before, paired fish control algae growth on reefs. When they begin to be overfished, the algae is able to grow and spread much more easily. The second issue is that the larger, older paired fish are the main breeders. They produce more eggs than the smaller paired fish and help maintain healthy populations. With the larger fish being caught to be eaten, paired fish numbers will continue to decrease over time and reefs will continue to become less healthy. Paired fish help keep the world's coral reefs healthy and happy. Without them, the world's oceans might look very different than they do today. Sadly, paired fish are in trouble in some places and they, along with the coral reefs and all the other organisms that depend on them, need help. If you would like to learn more about paired fish, their relationships with coral reefs, coral reef health, and overfishing, be sure to check out the links on our website. I hope that this episode was interesting and informative. Thank you from International Field Studies. All right. Okay, so we learned a lot about the parrotfish and we learned about our um, reef, right? So here's what our assignment is. So I want you to create for me a poster on the parrotfish, right? The parrotfish and the reef. I want you to use your techniques that you learned. You remember we learned about washes, this term, we looked at a lot of using words to create imagery, all right? So here I had a few ideas for you. I want you to come up with your own design. So you can take your paper, you design if you want to do your work portrait or landscape, all right? And also you will choose your words. So you could choose, so your words could be anything you want concerning the parrotfish and the reef. So for instance, protect the parrotfish, save our reef, all right? So here it is, I made a border, right? You can't see it, right? But I use different colors, protect the parrotfish, save our reef. Another one, yes, parrotfish, white sands, beautiful reef. I created my border with that. Next one, protect the parrotfish, save our reef, protect the parrotfish. Save the parrotfish, save our reef, save our parrotfish. And I did it over and over again. Um, the, the, um, the host just said parrotfish means saving the parrotfish means saving a having a healthy reef. Okay? So you come up. So you, if you want, you can, repeated words, make your border. Remember, when we do in repeated words, you have to maintain your letter size, okay? So I want your border, you maintain your letter size. You come up with a, with a wording, all right? You could listen again to the video. I'm gonna send the video separate again to you. And you can listen again and see if you come up with a slogan, right? So you are creating a border, right? So you're doing a poster too. So you have to sketch out everything. So let's say I wanted to do save the parrotfish, save our reef. Notice how I have my guidelines and my letters are the same size. My words are balanced too in the middle of the page. Save the parrotfish, save our reef. All right, whichever slogan you're using, you must letter it in the center of your page, make it balanced properly. You're using your guidelines, then you write it over and then you rub off your guidelines. I mustn't see your guidelines, okay? Then I want you to come up with an idea in your background, your, your, what, what your poster will have. Well, obviously your poster is going to be of a reef, right? So firstly, you have to create a wash. Remember the wash, right? You're gonna create your wash. And then you're gonna come up to, before your wash, you have to come up with what it is you're drawing, what it is you're creating, what it is you want to show, all right? So some of you might want to keep it simple and just have something like this. No fishing of the parrotfish with your wooden, 
okay that's an option right i got my pieces but you will do what you want to do right and some of you might want to put a uh, um at least an example of a coral right what a beautiful now remember when you're doing coral we want to make it look beautiful eh? because the reef it's supposed to be pretty it's supposed to be filled with many colors and obviously we have in the parrot fish all right so if you want you could do like me where i drew everything separately and then i stuck it down if not you draw out everything first and then you paint or color or colored pencils crayons anything that you want to do another thing we learned was words so if you look carefully on the parrot fish here you would see the words of the um, on the parrot fish so here i had algae eater reef protector all right sand white sands i wrote that on the parrot fish okay this is another example of a design that I did. And I put, if you look carefully, you would see the words, save me, save me on the fins. Okay. So I could have had my image, right? Let me just change it around. Right. So I could have my image here. I could stick this parrotfish here. I could stick this one down here. Okay. I stick them where it is I want and created my message. Okay. So. Here's your assignment. So we learned about using words and repeating words that will be artistic. The parrotfish is a very colorful fish, so you can use many colors. You will come up with your own slogan. Some of you might want to use mine. I'm fine with it. Save the parrotfish, save our reef. Um, keeping the parrotfish, healthy reefs. Um, Protect the parrot fish, protect our reef. Anything, you can choose anyone and you repeat the words over and over. Remember, it must be consistent, all right? Even to if you want to have the words written over between the waters here, save our reef, so you can do that. So here it is, you're creating an image and notice I said we're doing abstract. It's abstract, meaning that you're mixing things with what is real, okay? So you are doing an image, a poster for me on the coral reef and the parrotfish. And your image must send a message, a message about saving the parrotfish, mainly it's saving the parrotfish. When you do your reef for me, I want to see a beautiful looking reef. I don't want to see one that's green or one that's gray because that means it's depleted. It must be colorful because once we have a parrotfish, we have a healthy looking reef. So that is what your image is supposed to show me. In your work, at some aspect, if it's the border, I want to see repeated words, which is what I taught you. Or if you want the parrotfish, repeated words. Your background is going to be a wash, which is what I taught you, all right? Um, you are free to go on Google and you can see the drawings of the parrotfish to assist you, the colorings of the parrotfish. You could research it. There are many, many different types and species of parrotfish, so you can have fun. You could also look at your images of the coral reef. If you want to, you could even draw in your image, in your picture, a glass bottom boat because Normally, you would stay from your boat and look down into the reef, wouldn't you, right? But it's very important that you do a positive poster because we need to send a message about saving our reefs and saving our parrotfish, which right now, well, because there's need for food, but if we overfish that parrotfish, it is going to have another ripple effect, which will be no reef. And no reef means no jobs, no tourism, right? And it wouldn't be something that I can boast of. Many years ago, I saw a colorful reef, right? Can you boast of when you're going now to see a colorful reef with parrotfish? 
is hardly likely because they are feverishly trying now to save our reefs. Okay, girls? So I look forward to your artwork. Don't forget safe practices. When you put on your mask, you hold it by the handle, covering your nose and your mouth. Okay? Adios.